we have been in this series on the Holy Spirit. And so, as I was praying and wrestling with this message, I was saying, God, help me understand what it is you want us to know about the Holy Spirit. And what I realized is a lot of times we don't have the power available to us because we're not tapping into the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you charged your phone last night? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all, <laughs> you might not even charge your car, but you're going to charge your phone. <laughs> well, I want you to look at this service as a spiritual charging station. Because some of you are, are operating at 25% of your capacity. Others, maybe 50%. But I want you to get to that overflow where, where you have so much power, you can walk in a room, you don't even have to speak and the deal is done. Come on somebody, who am I talking to? I, I want you to have so much power, you can just walk into the audition and they say there's something on this person. I don't know, they just feel like they already got the part. They just act like they already are in the movie. So we're gonna cast them. They didn't even go off book, ooh. But they had the power of the living God within them. So I, I wanna give some foundation and then we're gonna transition into, you know, where God really has us today. And I pray that you would allow this word to get deep into your spirit. And so I wanna start uh, with Acts chapter one, verse eight. And I got a, a number of scriptures, so I'm gonna try to lay the foundation and then we're gonna end up in Acts chapter three. So watch this. This is Jesus talking, he's talking to the disciples, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will receive power. You will receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Sumeria and to the ends of the world. When the Holy Spirit falls on you, you will have a power that will make you be able to be test a testimony to what God can do. So when they're talking about being witnesses, it's that you're going to perform miracles and do things that nobody has ever seen. So you will be able to talk about who God really is. I want to pause right here. When you have the power of the Holy Spirit and people know what you've been through. And you can still show up and smile. You can still show up and give God praise? Do you realize how powerful of a witness you are to what God can do? Who am I talking to right now? How many of you have had to come to church and you barely held it together? Who am I talking to? Come on, how many of you, had to, how many of you have cried on your way to service before? Who am I talking to? Then you are powerful witnesses about what God and the power of Jesus can do. So let's fast forward. I want to fast forward. We're in chapter 2 now. Now watch this, uh, the Holy Spirit falls, right? Holy Spirit falls at the beginning of chapter two. And, and all of those that, all the Jews that were there, it says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. But as they were speaking in other tongues, they were the, even though they had different languages, they could understand each other. And it was interesting, verse 12 says, those that were watching were amazed and perplexed. And they said, what does this mean? How is this possible? Verse 13. Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. <laughs> oh, boy, I want to pause. I'm not, I mean, some of y'all may have come and you had wine. I'm, I'm, not, hey, I'm, not, I'm, not talk, I'm not trying to hear. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to judge you. But here's my point. When you have the power of the Holy Spirit, when you have the power of the testimony of what God has done in your life, it reduces your need to take a substance to feel a way that is organic to how you were created. Uh-oh, I'm sorry. I know. I love you. You know I love you. I am not here to judge. But can I tell you truth? They did not understand why they were able to do what they were doing. So in their ignorance, they said they must be drunk. Watch this. Then Peter stood up with the 11, the 11 other disciples. He raised his voice and he addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. 
<laughs> See, people who do not know what, what, what you guys are really on, they may be watching on the live stream thinking that you on something you ain't on. You just on that Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? Because they see you in here praising and going crazy. And they say, how could you have so much joy when you have nothing in the bank account? It's because I've got the Holy Spirit. Who am I talking to right now? How can you praise him and you ain't got no job? They see you going crazy and they think you might be on something. You may have taken some. I ain't taking nothing but the Holy Word. I ain't got nothing in me but the Holy Spirit. I'm high on Jesus this morning who am I talking to right now hey it's interesting you know you know friends of mine who used to do something they don't do anything anymore and they're totally cool with that their friends are still dibble and dabble they say how can you be cool not doing nothing oh I got I got into that word I started I started getting high on them okay let me get back to my message because that's not in my notes hallelujah somebody all right so so Peter is saying listen they're not drunk okay They, they just they just got the Holy Spirit all right all right, you're, you're not intoxicated with drink. You're, you're intoxicated with the spirit. Can we pause here for a minute? When you allow the Holy Spirit to get you out of where you are into who you are, you, you, won't, you, you won't be as worried about what you think isn't happening. This is why I tell people, don't call yourself aspiring anything. Uh, if, if we had a seed right now, I just had a peach uh, be earlier before. So if, I had, if that seed, is that seed an aspiring peach tree? No, you plant that seed, what's in it's going to come out of it. May I submit for your consideration, you are not aspiring, you already are. <laughs> Uh uh-uh, uh, no, no, you gotta catch that. Don't tell me you're an aspiring director, an aspiring actor, uh, uh, an aspiring teacher. No, you are. But you gotta start knowing it. Turn to your neighbor and say, You gotta know it. Come on. Watch this. I'm gonna fast forward to verse 22. This is Peter talking. He says, Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you know your, as you as you yourselves know. Verse 23. This man, Jesus, was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of the wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. Verse 24, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Some of you, I need you when you see this text, there have been some situations that have felt like death to you. There have been some circumstances that literally it felt like you were having, having to kill part of who you are, kill a part of a relationship, kill part of a job. Who am I talking to? Anybody been through some death-like experiences? But because Jesus was raised from the dead, death cannot have its hold on you. You don't know who I'm talking to right now. Somebody doesn't realize they're sitting next to the resurrected Jew because they... People thought the situation you went through was going to put you in the grave. But uh uh-uh, God said, I'm going to make you better and stronger coming out of what people thought would kill you and you are still alive. Who am I talking to this morning? Anybody been resurrected from a situation that you thought was going to kill you? Let's just take a moment. If you have been resurrected, I want you to stand in your power right now. The situation almost took you out. But God said, I'm going to allow you to be reborn in me. You better give God praise. You better give him praise. Death thought it had its hold on you. Heartbreak thought it had its hold on you. But God said, I'm going to use the heartbreak to build up their heart stronger than it's ever been before. Would you just take time to give God praise this morning? Hey, you may have your seat if you can. Let me keep going. Peter's testifying about what happened to Jesus. Verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what what shall we do? Verse 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins. 
and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Pause. The part that stuck out to me in the scriptures, all who are far off. Hmm. Yeah, see, sometimes we may know the way, but we deviate from the way. And sometimes we get so far off the path that we pick up guilt and shame and, and we believe we're not even worthy to come back. I don't know who I'm talking to. Anybody been far off the path before? Come on, let's just be honest. Anybody been far off your way? Isn't it amazing that the Holy Spirit is like a, our own personal GPS? You know how it is when you put that destination in, no matter where you go, it always gets you where you gotta be. So even if you've gone far off, you had the GPS of how to get back to Jesus in your heart, so you made it back. Who am I talking to right now? And, and some of you may be watching and you're feeling far off. It's all right. All you got to do is tap into the Holy Spirit within you and you're going to get right back to where you need to be. Do not let the enemy allow guilt and shame to get in your spirit to the degree where you don't come back to where you know God is calling you. Bring your guilt. Bring your shame. Amen. Don't worry. We all are on a journey. Can we just pause for a moment? And this is one of the things growing up as a Christian that it just blew my mind that we have no few months ago I preached on holding space. We get so judgmental about people's journeys. When if people knew what you went through and what journey you've been on, you ain't got no place to be judgmental. We all are on a journey. And some of us are in different places and that's okay. Turn to your neighbor, say, stop judging their journey. And I want you to say it just like that. Stop judging their journey. <laughs> come on can we just have more um uh, uh empathy for people's journeys can we do that can we start something new in our culture where we stop judging someone's journey and we just appreciate where they are i'm so tired of us having so much judgment peter is not meeting them with judgment he's meeting them with jesus amen and when you meet someone with jesus you meet them with acceptance and love amen watch this we gotta go Verse 40, with many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. <sighs> okay, okay. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Um, I know that everybody, you know, wants to be a part of the culture. <laughs> you know, yesterday when I was doing an interview, they were like, tell us why, you know, what BET does for the culture. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I can tell you what BT does for the culture. But it's really not for me about the culture. It's about the kingdom. Because this generation wants you to conform to the culture. If the culture wears a certain thing, they want you to wear a certain thing. If the culture says a certain thing, they want you to say a certain thing. Oh, we outside. That's what the culture said. But the kingdom says we inside. So now who's going to win? Come on, somebody. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? You might be outside, but I'm inside. Amen. And this is why I intend to stay, amen? Because I've been outside and ain't nothing out there for me. Who, who can testify? Ain't nothing out there for me. Ain't nothing out there for you. Come on, who am I talking to? Oh, we outside. No, why don't you come inside and sit down for a minute? <laughs> am I saying too much? Am I saying too much? <laughs> oh, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. It's about the kingdom. And the more you're about the kingdom the more you will impact the culture. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all its righteousness and all the things you worry about will be added to you. I'm not telling you what I think, I'm telling you what I know. Being in Hollywood for 28 years and having an opportunity to affect the culture has only come because I prioritized the kingdom. And now I can impact the culture on behalf of the kingdom. When you have the culture and you have no kingdom, you're going to be very empty. I'm going to say it for those watching online. If you have the culture and you don't have the kingdom, you're going to be very empty. But if you have the kingdom, you don't even need the culture. Turn to your neighbor and say, seek the kingdom. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 41, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to the number that day. This is the very beginning 
or what we, we will come to find out was Christianity. And once the Holy Spirit fell and they heard about the message of Jesus Christ, 3,000 were added in that day. I look forward to a time when that will be our testimony. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We, we had two, three services and 3,000 were added to the number that day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. All right. So, so I want to get to chapter three because th- I just laid a foundation and this is really where I want to be. Verse 1 of chapter 3 says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple. Now, mind you, they have the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to see how that power impacts this particular story. So watch it. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. Pause. How strong is your prayer life? (laughs) Huh? Let me tell you something. I I believe... You know, don't get me wrong, I love technology. I, you know, I like, I, you know, my phone and stuff. But can we just acknowledge that the, the devil be getting busy through the phone? Who am I talking to? <laughs> and what I mean by that is that instead of waking up seeking to check texts from heaven, isn't it interesting that we roll over and pick up the phone and check texts from other people? Am, come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Am I the only one? Anybody ever, come on, let's just be, anybody do that before where you're like, you, 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 you want to roll over and pray, but you, over, you roll over and start scrolling. Who am I talking about? Come on, come on, please. Who, who, okay, all right, I'm not, I'm not in it alone. I just want to make sure, all right, because I'm trying. I say, God, come on, help me, Lord, please. Because what I realize is that if I want to have an empowered day, I must start it in prayer. I must start it with an intention to align myself with God's will. And that needs to be a daily commitment. Your prayer life is your power life. You want more power? Get more prayer. You know, I was uh, raised in in the San Francisco Bay Area, and my uncle, uh, my great uncle, Dr. D.J. Williams, started a ministry called Wings of Love, Maranatha Ministries, when I was nine years old, and it's still going in East Oakland, California, on 70th and MacArthur. And the thing, amen, amen. Somebody from the town here, okay. That's right. We out here doing kingdom business and town business. Y'all don't even know what that is. If you ain't from the town, you don't even know what I'm saying, but y'all know who know, okay? So there it is. There we go. There we go. You know what I mean? There it is. See, I got to do that for the, for the people in the town. You know what it is. <laughs> so, so watch this. His whole thing was about prayer. Before he would end any conversation, he would pray. Every time something would go wrong, he would go and he would pray. Prayer was his first response. And so many people see me praying online, that came because of him. Because he taught me about the power of prayer. So I say, Lord, I've got to pray and help people know that they are prayed for. Pause, how strong is your prayer life? And I don't say that to make you feel badly. If it's not strong, now's the time to get it stronger, amen? When you communicate with God, he will give you downloads that you can't get any other way. How many of you have been in your prayer time and God just dropped something on you? And you said, what? (laughs) You about to do what? (laughs) Wait a minute, Lord. I don't know about that. Come on now. It's about the power of prayer. So, So Peter and John, they were going up to the temple at the time of prayer about three in the afternoon. Verse two. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple. This is so interesting. Peter and John are approaching the temple. And at the same time, a man who was crippled from birth is being carried to the temple. You don't even realize how God is carrying you to the place which you will be blessed. I don't know who I'm talking to. Some of you are trying to network your way into what God wants you to do. And God said, I wish you would just stop networking. I wish you would just stop being anxious. Would you just allow me and would you just surrender to me and let me carry you where I would have you to be? You don't even understand what God has to do to set up things on your behalf would blow your mind. People that weren't even coming to church are going to come to church and they're going to come to you and say, hey, I've been seeing you every Sunday. God had told me to tell you this. All you have to do is show up up somebody you are too worried about what's gonna happen all you gotta do is show up the 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 crippled man showed up that day having no idea he was on a collision course for destiny show up let him carry you can we just pause there for a minute let him carry you why y'all so anxious 
Come on, come on, y'all. Can we just be honest? We kind of anxious about our success. Oh, what if it doesn't happen? How's it going to happen? And I don't know this person. I don't have that. Relax. Align yourself with him and enjoy the ride. Just earlier this week, somebody said, Devon, what are you building? What, what is it that you, you know, when you look up five years from now, what do you want? I said, I have no idea. I don't know. Because the last time I made plans, those didn't work out very well. So I'm just, I'm just going to let God do what he want to do. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm just letting him carry me. Who am I talking to? I'm just letting him bring me where he wants me to be. Or bring me to where he needs me to be. And I'm telling you, it is so beautiful. Like I, everything that's happening in my life, I did not see it was happening. I didn't know it was going to happen this way, but I'm letting him carry me. And when I let him carry me, I open myself up to the possibility of things I haven't even thought of. I need you to know, uh, right now, whatever you're praying for, the thought that you want to have happen, God's plan for your life is greater than that thought. Okay, we just pause for a minute. So, so think for a minute of like the prayer you really love him to answer. Okay, how many, how many have that prayer top of mind? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, raise your hand. Come on, okay, come on. Just a prayer, all right? Some of y'all say, I'm, you know, you're overthinking it. Just a prayer that you want him to answer, okay? <laughs> come on, raise your hand. Anybody, is there a prayer? Okay, so, so what God wants to do is greater than that. Watch this. You don't believe me? Watch what happens. It says that he was being carried to the temple. Carried, carried. What came to mind is if he was being carried, it means he didn't have the ability to do it for himself. If we don't have the ability to do something ourselves, that's called a dependency. A dependency is a state of relying on or being controlled by someone or something. I want to just fast forward real quick. I want to go to Galatians 5, 22. When we have the Holy Spirit, here's what it says. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I want to repeat. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we have the Holy Spirit, these are the things, these are the fruits of the Spirit. This is what comes out of us. And I began to ask the question, well, why does more love not come out of us? Why does more joy not come out of us? Why does more patience not come out of us? Because I believe it's blocked. Why is it blocked? Because of a dependency. Okay, all right, let me just take a step further. If you can't be happy until you get a certain text back. Okay, I'm just talking. Sorry, y'all, I lost some. I'm just going to talk over here. We have it in honest mode, okay? Because <laughs> you know how it is. Anybody been there before where you're like, wait a minute, you really in your feelings and you ain't heard back from a certain person. You checking your phone every five minutes. What's going on? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Anybody been there before? Any, maybe, okay. What do anybody been there? Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. But here's what I realized. If, if, you, if you or I can't offer love until we get that text, that means we're dependent. <sighs> Woo. If we can't be at peace, no matter what's going on in our career, we need certain things to happen for us to have peace. We're dependent. If, if we have to smoke something or drink something to, to just level ourselves out, that's dependency. Come on, who am I talking to? Huh? Come on. If, if I will only give you kindness because you're kind to me, that's a dependency. What am I dependent on? I'm dependent on circumstances or situations to bring out of me what the Holy Spirit has already put in me. And, the, and, and here is the danger about dependencies is that we never can be independent and experience what it's like to have true joy and true love because we're allowing a circumstance or situation to dictate to us how to feel. Some of you say, well, well, the last time I loved, they didn't, they hurt me. So I don't want to love again. Let's go back to the peach for a minute. The peach tree, the peach seed is planted. The tree comes up. The peaches come on the branches. Can you imagine the peach tree saying, well, I, I don't want to produce no more fruit. 
Because every time people just come and pick it and break the branches. Okay, this, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to come back to my message. i got to say something. You want to know how to find real love? Watch this. Does, does the, the fruit you've had, right? Do you even think about the tree from which the fruit came from? No. You just take the fruit. A lot of times when we are loving or we're giving, that's the fruit. And some people just take it because that's what they need. But you want to know real love, they actually care about the tree from which the fruit came from. Amen. It's very easy for someone to take your fruit. <laughs> Come on, who am I talking to? But if you want to know if somebody actually cares about you, they're going to get to know you. Well, tell me, how long have you been growing here? How much water does it take for you to feel the way you need to feel? Now, let me ask you, what, how many, what amount of sunlight do you need in order to be in the strength that you, because you seem pretty strong. You want to evaluate real love, somebody needs to love the tree, not just the fruit. Now, here's the other part of that. Don't be surprised when people take the fruit you got and they leave. It is what it is. But don't let that stop you from being the way you were created to be. And may I submit for your consideration. Whenever the tree is pruned, it always grows back stronger. So let's say you gave love to someone and they disregarded it. That means your love is coming back stronger. Let me ask somebody right now. Who, anybody understand what I'm saying? If, if you've had joy over a circumstance or situation and, and it did not work out, but you say, you know what? No matter what happens in my life, I'm going to wake up in joy. I'm going to wake up in happiness. Let me tell you, your happiness, your joy comes back stronger. Who am I talking to right now? Do not get yourself out of the business of producing the fruits of the spirit no matter what you've experienced mitigate your dependency on external circumstances to get you to feel a way that is your natural right the fruit of the spirit peace love joy kindness goodness when i read this i get excited lord that's how i want to be what i've learned is I then have to evaluate every dependency that is blocking the fruit of the Spirit from coming out. Right? So watch this. This text is actually uh, the covert idea underneath this text is to go from dependence to independence. Watch this. It says that he was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Is this okay, baby? Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called beautiful. A man with an ugly condition, an ugly circumstance, is being brought to a prophetic environment. So many of us have gone through ugly things, ugly situations, ugly jobs, ugly breakups. Who am I talking to? Come on, ugly family fights. But I need you to know that God is producing something beautiful in the midst of your life right now. I need you to know he is producing something beautiful. If you could only see what God is producing, you would know that he allowed some ugliness to then be able to show you what real beauty looks like. Here is a man with an ugly condition being put at a gate called beautiful. That seems like an oxymoron, but you don't even realize that, that the gate is about to symbolize the miracle that is happening, about to happen in his life. I need you to know that God is always setting you up to take you where he's wanted you to be. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. You may think you just came to church service, but this might be the beautiful gate for you. You might be going through some ugly things, but God wants you to know the beauty of this house is about to invade every every area of your life. Who am I talking to right now? Turn to your neighbor and say, you look beautiful. Turn to your neighbor and say, I do too. Yeah, I know I look good. Come on. I know I look good. You better own that. Hold on. Let me get back to my, let me get back to my word. Okay. It says he was put into the, the gate called beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Verse three, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Pause. He asked them for money. Do not allow your pride to get you out of asking for what you need. Okay, 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 we just gotta pause here. The, 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 the man had no other means to support himself. 
He could have had a pride or an ego about that and said, I'm not going to show up and ask. But if I don't show up and ask, I'm not going to eat. We all need help. May I submit that for your consideration? Every person I know that is successful in this life asks for help. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Do not allow your pride to make you think, oh, if I ask for help, there's something wrong with me. No, there's not. We all need help. Amen? Amen. So if God puts on your question, puts on your spirit to ask a question for help, ask it. Well, what if they say no? Then that means God was going to use them, and that's okay. It's all right. So watch this. He asked them for money. Verse 4, Peter looked straight at him as John did. Then Peter said, look at us. This doesn't make any sense. The man asked for money. And then they say, look at us. That implies that he was asking like this with no expectation that he was going to get what he was asking for. Because if he was believing, he would have been looking at them. So that implies he was just asking on routine. Look, you know, it's amazing that we can show up at church with a routine, but not with an expectation that God's going to deliver what we're actually asking for. Who am I talking to right now? You can come here out of routine, but are you coming here out of expectation? You may be asking him to do things. You may be asking for him to do things in your life, but you might be like this, this crippled man doing it with no expectation, not believing that God is going to do it. He said, look at us. Before we can deliver to you or respond to your question, we need your attention. And this is where the battle wages every moment of every day our attention every moment of every day there is something battling for our attention might be our phone it might be our friends it might be our job it might be whatever it is where you give your attention where you give your time is where you give your life Be very careful where you place your attention. And there are some people who are not doing what they need to do in their life, so they're trying to get you distracted. They want all of your attention. Come on, somebody. You've got a lot of attention vampires out there. They're trying to just suck all your attention. May I submit for your consideration, if somebody wants your attention all the time and they get mad when you do not give it, that's a dependency. We call that codependency. You might want to send them to therapy. It's like, hey, I love you, but I can't be everything to you. Amen, somebody? Come on, y'all, oh, y'all don't like that, but it's true. It's true. You want healthy love. That means you got to bring something. They got to bring something. Amen? And then we both share the love that we got. If I need you to feel love, that means I don't feel love. And that means I'm going to overburden the relationship to get from you what I'm not doing for me. <sighs> Some of y'all like, stop it. About it. That's just too much. It's too much. It's 9 o'clock. It's too much. Watch it. Look at us. Give us your attention. Watch this. So the man gave them his attention expecting to get something from them. What was he expecting to get? Money. It had not even entered into his mind that there was something greater than money. He was just asking for the bare minimum. You don't even understand how you're just asking for the bare minimum. God says, I want to give you something you haven't even thought about. I want to bless your life in a way that blesses your children's 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 children until Jesus comes. Who am I talking to right now? That's the type of God we serve. Peter says, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk, verse 7, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Peter says, in the name of Jesus, I want to take you from dependence to independence. In the name of Jesus, I want to get you so set up that you can go make your own money. I want to get you so set up that you don't have to you don't have to come here another day and beg. Who am I talking to right now? You don't understand. This was all a setup to go from dependence to independence. And here's what's interesting: in a couple days, we're we're going to celebrate the Declaration of Independence. 
And for those of you that know, on July 4th, uh, back in 1776, uh, the, the founding fathers signed what we know as the Declaration of Independence. And that was 13 colonies from Britain here in the United States saying we are declaring our independence from Britain. Now, what's so interesting is that they wrote the Declaration of Independence in 1776, but the American Revolution did not end until 1783. So they declared it before they experienced it. Okay, 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 okay. So here's the thing. Too often we're waiting for the war to end to declare victory over what we're dependent on. But when you declare your independence, that can be a prophetic word that it might take time to catch up with. Who am I talking to right now? Anybody ready to declare your independence of the things, the circumstances, the situations that are setting you back? You might still be in the war, but your independence is guaranteed because you have declared it. Anybody willing to declare that you are ready to get free from whatever's holding you back? You may go ahead and stand to your feet right now. Anybody ready to get free? from circumstances, situations, substances that are holding you back. It might be a mindset, but you're declaring your independence. Come on, somebody. If 13 colonies could declare their independence from Britain, we can declare our independence from every circumstance and situation that's holding us back. I don't know about you, but I need you to know, you might think something has a hold on you and you keep trying to give it up. And you keep trying to, to work it out. And you've almost given up hope. But God called me to tell you, when you declare your independence, it's a prophetic word. It's a word of faith. They declared it and they still had to go fight for it. <laughs> it's okay that you're still fighting for your independence. Amen. Come on, somebody. You may have to fight through therapy. You may have to fight through journaling. You may have to fight through reading. But do me a favor. Do not quit fighting until whatever you're dependent on has been broken off of your life. Amen? The, the crippled man came to the beautiful gate and he was healed to go from dependence to independence. And then he can walk and jump and praise in the temple because he says, I know what it's like to be free. Some of you, the circumstances and situations and, and substances that are in your life are holding back your freedom. I want you to know if you declare it, you will experience what real freedom is like. I can't wait for you to walk up, wake up in the morning and you're just happy. You're just joyful. Why? Because you got the Holy Spirit. You know you got the power to, to not even worry about what's going to happen to the day because you know all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So whatever happens during the day, you're good. I want you to wake up in that spirit. When you wake up in that spirit, when you wake up in that independence, can nothing stop you. The scripture says that who the son sets free is free indeed. Anybody ready to get free right now? Come on, anybody ready to get free right now? Go ahead and give God a hand praise. Okay, okay. So, so here's the thing. I got to do a few things in just a few moments, so keep standing. First and foremost, just like you heard Peter preaching to the masses about the power of accepting Jesus as, for, as their personal savior, if you would like to accept Jesus as your personal savior, first and foremost, I would love for you to come down first today. If you want to accept Jesus as your personal savior, I want you to come down first today. And I'd love to see you walk and jump and praise your way down, amen? Come on, somebody, come on. You might be on the sides, you might be in the back, you might be on the left, come on down. Come on, welcome them as they come on, come on. Come on, anybody, there we go, there we go, amen. God bless you, my brother. Come on, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Come on. God bless you. <laughs> Come on. Who else? Who else? God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Come on. Who else? Who else? Real quick. We can't hold it open all day. Who else? You already know. You already know. He called you in January. Now it's June. Come on. Come on. Anybody else want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? The QR code is on the back. That is true, but also come down. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. There we go. God bless you, my brother. Come on. Come on. God bless you, my brother. <laughs> God bless you, my brother. Come on. Who else? Come on. Come on, one church. You can do better than that. 
Come on, who else? Who else? Okay, okay. While we're... Amen, amen, amen. Come on. <laughs> amen. God bless you, my son. God bless you. Amen, 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 amen. Okay. Um, here's the second part of this. Um, I, I, again, I, I'm just operating in the spirit and trying to be obedient. So the last time, uh, about a month, I think two months ago, at the end of 1130 service, I asked people to, you know, if you have a, a dependency on anything, it could be vaping, it could be weed, it could be pills, whatever, come and put them on the altar. Do you know some people put down the vape, haven't picked it up since? Amen. Amen. So before this service ends, I just got to ask, is there anybody here who has a dependency and you want to declare your independence by putting whatever is in your, your, your wallet, on, in, your, in your pockets, in, or your purse on the altar? It, 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 could be, it could be the pills. It could be the weed. It could be the vape. It, it, it could, whatever it is, you want to just put it on the altar and say, uh-uh, I don't want to be dependent on this any longer. Who am I talking to? Come on up. Come on up. I don't want to be dependent on this any longer. I'm no longer going to allow this crutch to dictate my life, my well-being, amen, come on, 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 anybody else, come on, come on, come on, one church, who the sun sets free, is free indeed, come on, is there anybody else, you may not even have it here, but you just want to put your hands on the altar, and when you get home, you're going to throw it away. Who am I talking to? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Make room. Anybody coming down? I want you to touch this altar. I want you to find a way to touch this altar. We can go all the way around. Touch this altar. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, you can even come over here. Come on over this side. Come on over this side. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Okay. 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 This is what happens when the power of the Holy Spirit falls. This is what it feels like. The anointing breaketh the yoke. Come on, somebody. The anointing breaketh the yoke. I declare and I decree no substance will steal your destiny. No substance will steal your heart. No substance will destroy your mind. No substance will ruin your heart. I speak health. I speak wholeness. I speak power. And I speak peace over you right now. In the mighty, holy, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let the church say, Amen. Hey! Do me a favor. For all of you down here at the altar, I need you to know this is your declaration of independence. Now, the war might just be starting because just because you're declaring your independence doesn't mean that it's going to walk itself out. Some of you, today is it, done, boom. I see the vapes on the stage, it's over. Others of you may need to go through a process. Don't judge your process. You've declared it, it will happen. See it through. Amen? Amen? Why, why am I so passionate about this? Because see, I was raised in the home of an alcoholic father. And that substance prevented him from being the man he wanted to be to us. And not only did that happen, but he died when I was nine years old at the age of 36 of a heart attack. So I've had to grow up my entire life. Only memories I had when, was it, when he was drunk, high, not in his right mind of him. And I said, the enemy from day one is trying to use these things to get us out of being who God called us to be. So I get passionate about this because I know personally the pain that's caused. So when I see you come down here, I need you to know God honors your strength. He honors your courage. He honors your vulnerability. Come on. He honors, he honors your transparency. Amen. That's why I say, hang in there. You see this battle all the way through. Amen. 
And I believe the same way that I, it's like in my life, I said, hey, I'm breaking the generational curse. Breaking it. I'm breaking it. I, I'm breaking it. Why? Because I want to be a living, breathing example of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to as well. Do me a favor. If you're in the audience, grab your neighbor's hand. Grab your neighbor's hand. And you can go across the aisle if you would. Go across the aisle. Amen. If you're here at the altar, grab your neighbor's hand. Grab your neighbor's hand. In 1783, at the end of the Revolutionary War, they declared victory. And they celebrated their freedom. Would you do me a favor? Would you raise your neighbor's hand? I want you to celebrate their victory. <laughs> I want you to celebrate their freedom. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now for every solitary soul watching online and here in the building that is celebrating victory. We speak, speak victory over their life, dear Lord. No longer dependent, but now independent. The only thing that we're dependent on is you and the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that anointing has broken the yoke today, dear God. And I pray that lives are changed forever on your behalf. This is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let all God's children say amen. Do me a favor. Hug your neighbor, please. Hug your neighbor.